fingers get so hot lately? It's important to turn to your liquids, you know? The body needs to hydrate. Okay. Some of that breakfast tea. I'll be doing some of that hydrating stuff, Mama. And I'll fix me up a batch of that and have you mm. on our eyes with plenty Sure of is the good stuff now. And I'll yeah. have that breakfast tea for dinner. Hey, folks. Come on here. Hang on. Where's that remote control gone? Da, 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 da. Turn that down a bit. How are you all? You should encounter me in a different location in Kilt Mansion. Reason being that because of lockdown, Mrs. Kiltman is working in my usual studio, having converted it to an office. So I've been banished. Banished, y'all. So, anyway. What we're doing right now, I've got a mask review for you. Yes, as the title yeah. kind of gave away. I've been on a bit of a Texas Chainsaw kind of riff of late, and uh, I've really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, uh, oh, it's grim. It's grim stuff without a doubt. And I've got, the film in question is playing on the big 75 inch screen behind us right now. I will turn this round, but you'd see the mess that the rest of the room is in. <laughs> but I will turn it down even more because you're going to hear chainsaws and a whole lot of screaming taking place. This is the the prequel to the remake. Michael Bay and Platinum Dunes during like the early 2000s got the license to remake loads of horror properties. They did Friday the 13th with meh results. They did Nightmare on Elm Street with absolutely disastrous results. Don't ever, ever mention that film to me again. And, uh, and they, they also did Texas Chainsaw in 2003. And, you know, unbelievably, it was a really, really good, worthy movie. It was a good remake. It, it was grim, nasty. It was everything that the first, the original movie is, was, always will be. But without that absurdist sense of humour, it was just bleak, nihilistic, horribly violent and aggressive. And then, it was a success as well. So for Plat Platinum Dunes. And then of course they made a prequel. Because that was also the vogue. Everyone, everyone, or rather Hollywood, not everyone. Hollywood seems to think that people want origin stories. Which is why you so often see Spider-Man and Batman forever getting their, their origin story retold and told and told again. So we wanted to give the background to Leatherface and the Sawyer family. You know? And uh, <laughs> uh, these yokels are having a great, great good old time of it, aren't they? And uh, the, the prequel, which is called Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. And basically the same sort of plot is rehashed. Some, you know, four teenagers, or four young youngsters, hippies, you know. Actually, they're not hippies, because one of them is uh, going to Vietnam for his second tour of duty. He's also going to take his brother with him, but his brother doesn't want to go. And over the course of their road trip across Texas to get to the, uh, the drafting centre, um, he's going to burn his draft card and not want to go. And him and his girlfriend are going to take off to Mexico. They ain't none of them going to get there. No, because Arlie Ermey, yes, the great Arlie Ermey, has ever played a nice guy ever in his life. No. Uh, real life Marine, Marine Corps drill instructor, and an unbelievable twat, but incredibly good at these volatile, blackly humorous, in your face fucking roles, made famous of course by Full Metal Jacket, where he plays a Marine Corps drill instructor who gets blown away by Private Pile, yes, and justifiably so as well. <laughs> but uh, he plays who be, what a character that becomes Officer or Sheriff Hoyt. Sheriff Hoyt is actually Charlie Hewitt, who is the elder brother in the original, well, in this version's original Hewitt family, or rather, you know, the Sawyers that they become later on. It's all very fucking convoluted. But uh, the issues remain the same. The slaughterhouse in Texas gets closed down. Everyone's out of a job. So all the old tricks of the trade, what they're gonna do now? Well, they're gonna, they've gotta survive. It's the American way, you know. So they capture people and they torture them kill them, eat them, and Leatherface, or Thomas Hewitt, as we discover in this movie, who was born on the, the sawdust and blood-strewn floor of the slaughterhouse, 
by some, well, we don't get to know who his mother really is. Her waters break, she, she cries, you know, for help, but no one comes to her assistance, and she gives birth to this hideously deformed, horrible animatronic fucking, you know, puppet, and uh, which is then thrust into a dumpster, where he is found by the mother of this family, the Hewitts, slash Sawyers, as they will become, on how that works out. And um, brings him back, and he has a facial deformity. His nose is eaten away, his, his lower face is completely ripped up and diseased, and he begins to fashion the masks to cover it and hide it all. He also grows to huge stature as well. In this film, he's played by... I have a cue card here, because this guy I've never heard of before or since. Andrew Brynjarski. And he's good. He's good, you know. Anyway, this film's directed by Jonathan Liebsman. And it's not bad. I am on record as saying in a previous video that, you know, I am not the biggest fan of, you know, all the endless sequels and remakes and prequels and blah, 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 blah. And yet, I have just sat and watched this and I've seen it before. And do you know what? You know, call me grim, call me ghoulish, call me macabre, call me twisted, sick and perverted. Just, just call me. Just, just call me once in a while. But I actually fucking love it. It's grim. Leatherface is now about to do some real nasty things to somebody who has got chained to it. Yeah, well, you, you can gather the sort of thing. This movie does not hold back. The... The Gru, the gore, the mayhem, the entrails, the oh, the chainsaw goes through flesh. Things are shotgunned, cleavered, ripped up, oh, in close up. It is grim. A lot of actual diehard chainsaw fans did not like this movie uh, because it was so relentlessly grim. Gore hounds of the new generation who were weaned on Hostel and um, the Saw movies, again, did not like this because it was so unrelentingly grim but you know what it's treating its its subject with realism and you know it is horrible it is, sorry my eyes keep going over because i keep watching little bits but anyway leatherface has an unusual look throughout half of this movie because he wears a muzzle to hide his deformity throughout his working years in the slaughterhouse and then throughout the first half maybe three quarters of this movie he wears this muzzle. After that, he will, one of the main guys will have his face sliced off and Leatherface will wear his full face mask for the first time. And, uh, and it's not as effective as this muzzle. This muzzle, which I'm gonna show you because I got the mask made by Ruby's, the official mask. First of all, where's the, um, the labels, the stuff? Here we go, before I show you the mask, just to show you that it's authentic. God, the mask is now falling all over the place. There we go. It's like a chainsaw mask, okay? There's all your instructions and your, your stuff, how to wield the chainsaw and how to skin faces. So that's it. So it's a very unusual look for Leatherface, but it's also a very frightening look. Now, I'm going to be honest. This is made by Rubies, who I don't normally hold in the highest of esteem. But they have come up with some good stuff in the time, and if they get the license to a, you know, a product, to an image, they, you know, sometimes they do come up with the goods. This one I'd seen previously in reviews and photos, and I thought, that looks amazing. When mine turned up, it was battered, battered in transit. It was squashed and misshapen, hideously out of, out of shape, you know. I mean, it, when, it's, when it's back in shape, it's still fucking hideous. <laughs> So come on, Kiltman, cut to the chase. Show us the goddamn mask. You waffled on for almost 10 minutes there. I'm just here for the latex. Okay. I have since to try to get some shape back into it because I don't know what latex rubies use, but it's not as effective as the likes of Trick or Treat or Gucci Productions or Zagoni, uh, where a mask can arrive, scrunched up, you take it out of the packaging, and it just goes, wink! And it's back into its proper shape with only a couple of exceptions that I've ever come across. And I've got hundreds of masks now. And, uh, you know, I'm very, very impressed with the quality of their stuff. Rubies, and especially this one, took a lot of work. So I'm going to show you now 
I packed it out with loads of like, you know, stuff, paper, you know, all sorts of mannequin heads, everything to try and fatten the head out, but it was still grotesquely ill-shaped. So I then realized I had to flatten it down, ironically. So I then held it beneath a seven and a half K weight. And that seemed to do the trick. Then again, you know, seven and a half K weight on your face would do the trick as well, wouldn't it? If you wanted to lose your jowls and your cheekage, that's the answer. So folks, rubies, Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, leather face, muzzle mask. Rubies do also produce the, the mask that he wears with the full face thing, uh, which I don't really like the look of, but I do like this, or rather I did like this. There's something about this shape which does not work in a mask. Right, okay, what you can see is he manufactures his own uh, muzzle. Now, I'm not sure in the film if it's made out of actually leather or it's the hide off a cow or roadkill or whatever. Because in, in the montage sequence during the, the credits, you see him with animals and he makes a sort of fuzzy felt fair face muzzle and other stuff with dead animals. So it could be a combination. But there you go. You can see where authentically it cuts into his, well, the remains of his deformed nose. He has numerous wartage upon his, his face. So it's unusual in that you've got, it's not a full human face mask, which he's stitched together. It's a half mask with, there's his normal face. So you've got Leatherface's normal face. Wow, rarity. Uh, the hair is fucking horrible. It's got that horrible fake sort of plasticky feel to it. Although the shaping uh, isn't that bad. It should be a hell of a lot longer. He's got longish straggly hair. So if I put this on, it actually would probably look more authentic, which we'll do, we'll do. We'll come on to that. Now, if you look the details on all of this, um, you've got lots of the stitching there around the mouth and around where he's put the straps on to hold it in place. Now, they may look, they look like maggots actually, don't they? Little wriggly maggots. That's quite a good touch, thinking about it. I don't think that was intentional. Um, but they are, they're not, unlike so many other masks from Leatherface, where the stitching is actually genuine stitching going through, little leather bits of strap and cord. These are just bits of latex which are painted and they're quite sloppily painted as well. You probably can't quite see on that, but they're not that accurate. Someone's been a bit slapdash with them. Grand scheme of things, does it really matter? Does it? Does it matter? Maybe not. Um, but so you've got one strap going up the side here. Now this should come round and fix round the back somewhere. I've checked, it doesn't. Um, there's also, on this particular one, some of the uh, the glue line is a bit haphazard as well, so the hair's lifting up uh, away from it. That, I, you know, I can work with that. that uh, that's not a bad thing. I'm not saying, well, don't get it, because you know, my one's, the glue's shite. No, because your one, the glue might be great on it. And either way, if it's bad, you can still fix that. That's not a major deal. So I'm not, you know, not coming down like a ton of bricks on that one. But. It's just the shape, I cannot get that shape back in and it just looks, the, the eye slits seem too, way too big, way, way too sort of angular, um, the eyebrows are just sculpted in so there's no actual hair there, but, but overall, you know, that's, if we, I'll put it on and you might see it a bit better, I'm hoping you'll see it a bit better. Because sadly, even though I've had that 7.5k weight on it, the fucking thing is now bunched out again. Folks, you're now seeing me reacting to this genuinely because I am fucking not happy with the way that this has arrived. That is all over the fucking show and it's pissing me off no end. You've got these pushdurants oozing warts around, so you've got like, they're red and inflamed, but they're also, you know, they've got a push you the head to them as well. That's quite grim. And, you know, it's, it's quite detailed, I suppose. Um, 
this this look here is an astonishingly effective one in the movie. He's a big guy. He's hulking, and you know he's he's about to kill a biker. This is a grim sequence. I'll describe it to you. I ain't gonna show it. This biker gets his arm broken, and he falls down on the chainsaw, which is not actually on. And then they hold him down, and then rev up the chainsaw, and just bring it up through him, and cut him in half diagonally. <laughs> okay. So we. See, that design, I'm looking at him now, that design work is actually very accurate. It's just the deformity on the mask itself, which is really bringing it down. Oh, I love the sound of chainsaws in the morning, you know? Oh, it's time to hydrate. I think that's his first chainsaw kill of all and it then it marks the turning point for him and the chainsaw will become his most you know signature weapon he uses hammers and cleavers and all sorts like that for folks that like this sort of thing there are no markings on the inside no markings at all but there's also no smell there's no latex smell i, I see a lot of people who review these things and go you know this got quite a grotesque you know, oh god, it stinks of rubber and uh, well, a lot of them do. But once you took it out the bag, you know, it kind of dissipates quite quickly. I find, or maybe I'm just used to it. I don't know. Folks, I'm going to put the mask on and let's see if maybe with my hair it gives it a bit more authenticity. Now, how many reviewers of masks, you know, go to that degree, that extent of shoving their tongue out at you? Oh, that chainsaw's just gone through someone's guts. It's all bits flying off. Oh, Jesus. Um, no, folks, I'm not happy. The, the eye slits are wrong. They're wrong. Now, it may be because it's still squashed up. It may be because of that. So maybe I'm giving it a bit of a bad rap for reasons which are not because of the actual design, but because of the, the damage, and I'm gonna call it damage, it's undergone in transit. The face is, this is why I try to flatten it, because it should be more like that than squashed up like that. See, look at that. Looks like a little inscrutable Chinaman. Rather than a big, broad, cannibalistic Texan. See, that looks all right from there, doesn't it? Looks all right. As you can see, it's not a, a full deluxe mask. It does not go down the back of the, the neck. Um, but it wouldn't do, because the back of the neck is his normal neck. It's just a muzzle. Now, I just saw him in profile on the, on the big screen there. In the exact, the way I'm looking at it like that. And it does look like that. So that is an accurate mask as far as detail and the look is concerned. The hair could be better, but you can work with that. You know, you could bring it down. It should be more straggly down here, and it's definitely longer. But, you know, it's an unusual look for Leatherface. It is. In here, you can see a bit of cartilage. You know, they've done it, they've, you know, they make it glistens as well. They've made an effort to make it look grim. I may be giving this quite you know a derogatory sort of review because of the effects of the it's had in transit um, but either way you know I've now got a misshapen mask and um, I don't like the way that they've, they've painted these um, little stitches I do not like the way that's not very effective it's a bit slapdash I would say 
I'm not too fussed on these sculpted eyebrows either, you know. Bit of a bit of a fucking scouse brow we got there going on there, you know, with all our scouse beards going out of our town with their thickened up and bushy eyebrows. You got that going on. But um, you know, but the skin texture actually is actually pretty good, you know. You probably can't see there, but there's a lot of a lot of texturing on the skin itself beyond the wattage. Um, I do like the fact that they've, they've, they've put the, the strap up the side there, but I kind of wish that they'd followed up, followed suit with a bit of strapping down the other side, which I think is more towards the back to keep it anchored in. No, it definitely isn't there. The hair which I've been knocking is actually very thick. There's a good coverage of hair there, which I do find with their Ruby stuff. Rubies do tend to put a hell of a lot of foliage on you know, in the barn of their, of their sculpts. But uh, unlike, say, Trick or Treat, where it's in like strips and sometimes they look like they've got a bit of alopecia going on, um, although their hair tends to feel better to the touch, this is actually um, fucking horrible and dead, dead synthetic. Um, but hey, you know. I'm not just I'm not finding fault for the sake of finding fault folks I just I think I love the look he has in this movie and he's far, he's far more intimidating with that look than he is when he puts a full face mask on and that's part of the thing with the, the leather face mythos is that he looks absurd for a big brute of a man who does the most despicable things that there, there is a quality of um, sort of pantomime absurdity to him because of these masks which he's so badly stitched together and he's put makeup on on some of them lipstick and you know a bit of blusher on the cheeks and like you know <laughs> eyeliner it, but it shows the crazed wolf mentality that doesn't that shows a fucking sadistic really grim look to him this muzzle effect oh it does have a it, it does work and you kind of once he gets well, I'm looking at the final girl now, Chrissy, played by, ooh, uh, hang on a minute, uh, Jordana Brewster, who is exquisitely gorgeous. She is. A bit like in um, Texas Chainsaw 3D, which is a pile of shite. But I will come on to that at some point, because I think it's worth talking about. You've got um, Alexand Alexandra Dar Dardano, or Dardano, and she is, yeah, yeah. That'll get your chainsaw revving, no mistake. This film has so much blood and guts in it, it that it is, it's a tour de force, but it, it is primarily the torture that Officer, or sorry, Sheriff Hoyt, really, Charlie Hewitt, Arlie Ermey, inflicts on the people he captures because he assumes the identity of the, of the local sheriff because everyone's leaving town. The slaughterhouse going, oh we are. Here's Uncle Monty getting his legs fucking sliced off. He got he got shot in the leg, so Sheriff Hoyt has, has gone a bit, he's gone even more mental. And now the chainsaw's been put to good use. He wants, you know, his brother to, you know, come on, use it again. Well, we're gonna, that's gonna get infected, so you're gonna have to take that leg off. And because he's a bit clumsy with the chainsaw, he hits the other leg, which was actually all right. And he goes, oh, you damn fool, you're gonna have to take that leg off now to balance it up. So he cuts both fucking legs off him. Nice work, Tommy. <laughs> but he is he's the most aggressive thing in the movies, in the remake and the prequel. He is so convincingly sadistic that oh my god, you know. And even in the film seven when he plays a good guy, he plays a cop, the captain, he tells uh, Morgan Freeman's, you know, detective Somerset, he was you know, uh, someone had a you know a problem with a fat boy and they kicked him to bits. You know, you know what of it? What of it? <laughs> uh, a blind man gets mugged in the street. Apparently, you get told about this, and then while he's lying there bleeding, someone else comes up to him and stabs him in both eyes. And like, all the army as the captain just goes, "What's your point, Somerset?" You know, it happens. <laughs> just, God, you've got no redeeming qualities whatsoever, have you? But he's a fabulous actor when it comes down to it. Uh, folks, look at the state of that fucking mask. Look at it. 
It's the hugest thing ever because it's gone so far. That's not gonna go back into shape. It doesn't matter what I do to it. It's sat under a weight for days now and all it's done is spring back out into this fattened, misshapen mess. It should be more like that and it should be more like that. Those eyes should not be little fucking slanty piss holes. It should be more like that. So, fuck that. Not happy, folks, not happy. But hey, you know, you live, you love, you learn, and then you drink whiskey. And then you make all the same mistakes all over again. <laughs> um, lest you think I'm finished with Texas Chainsaw, um, no, there is a fair bit more to come. Oh, I've just noticed another little proper brought down. There is a sequence in this where one of the girls, one of the two girls who's in it, makes a getaway and she's driving away from that, that hideous, it's a different farmhouse in these two movies than the original films. And it's a horrible place. It looks like some kind of colonial fortress out in the middle of nowhere with nothing around it and two floors, but with these massive columns, you know, on the front porch up until the, the, the roof, which makes it look like some kind of prison fortress thing. It's fucking hideous. This girl makes a getaway. And, um, but as she's driving away, you know, I think she's got away with it. Leatherface has caught up and he uses one of these. So this like, as she's driving, right into her shoulder, right there. And just in one continuous shot, and you see it from the inside of the cab, hauls her out, oh God, and then drags her back to the house. Oh my God. Folks, so endeth my coverage of um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning, the Leatherface muzzle mask. Mine has turned out to be a disaster. Um, yours might not. Rubies do the mask of the full face, um, but looking at the pictures of it and seeing it in the movie, I, I don't want it. I'm not bothered by that one at all. I'm not, I know I'm an obsessive and a, a huge collector of these things, but uh, I. I don't want all the leather face masks because some of the looks I don't think are that good. Um, anyway, I've said my piece and uh, there you go. I still, as far as I'm concerned, Chop Top in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is probably still my favorite character. <laughs> yeah. Dog will hunt, <laughs> now nah, land, you know, he is, Incredible. I'm gonna get the mask of him. Trick or Treat do a splendid mask. Some other company do it as well, but it's slightly different. Uh, but I think I'm gonna get the Chop Top mask as well because he is such an alarmingly amusing, yet terrifying, yet aggravating character that he's just so memorable. His dialogue is brilliant. Bill Mosley, I support you. Um, <laughs> anyway. That's it for now, folks. I've talked enough of this leather-faced claptrap for now. So, in the meantime and in between time, enjoy what's left of your lockdown, because as I speak, when that, there's now talks of when are we lifting the restrictions, I know Trumpety Trump wants to end it all right now. Uh, Italy and France, Germany, Spain are all beginning to relax restrictions, I think. China has relaxed restrictions uh, massively, although Singapore apparently got a huge fucking, you know, a second wave after they relaxed them. So who knows, in the good old, let's say good old, in the UK, let's just leave it at that, uh, they're reviewing the whole thing today, um, but there'll be no relaxation of restrictions for the next couple of weeks, maybe three weeks. So, hey, a lot more time for whiskey drinking in the sunshine and making inane videos. So folks, uh, I'm sorry that wasn't the most enthusiastic of videos, but you saw what I had to work with and I've done some effort to try and put that back into shape and it's conspired to fuck me over. So, big thumbs down on that one. Uh, the mask, if you get it, might be okay. The mask that I got is a shit fest. So, folks, Head cheese all round. In the meantime, in between time, 
be happy, be healthy, keep it kilted, keep it Celtic. And I'm going to see you all. Drop and give me 20, you draft dodging son of a cocksucking bitch. <laughs>